Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Yo, what's good, everybody? Thanks for being so patient with us. Like you see, I got my man James Crawford uh, sitting next to me. I'm your boy, Mr. Dre. Dre's house. We're live. We're ready to get into some topics or whatever. But um, we're running a little late. Not because of me. Not because of him. What are you doing? All right, man. Yeah, yeah. The mic or whatever. Yeah, All right. All right, but before we even get going, of course, we got to pay some bills. And we're going to start off with Abraham, Kevin Spandis, Sons, Allstate Insurance. You're in good hands. When you reach out to that brother, please give him a call at 718 uh, da, 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 381 You can hit him up on his email, KevinSpand at Allstate.com, or his website, AKP, AKP, AKSPANN.com. Or you can hit him up on this free app that you will see at AKSPANN. Download it on your phone and get a lot of good information that's on there. Um, you know, def definitely touch base with him. That's the reason why I have this. Mm -hmm. All right. I see. All right. So I definitely, definitely uh, make sure you touch base with this young man. Doing a lot for the community, doing a lot for people who deal with him with insurance. Mr. Information, uh, I learned so much about insurance that I never knew. So definitely make sure you talk to this young brother and get all the information you can. If he can't help you, he would definitely work with you and find the right policy or the right company or whatever that you're looking for to help you out. That's one thing that's good about him. Also, Emily Stewart Stewart Film Group uh, opening up her new, well, it's open now, her Stewart Film, Stewart Cinema and Cafe that's open in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. You can contact her at www.stewartfilmgroup.com. Uh, the cafe cinema is, or well, the cinema cafe is a lovely place. The food is good. The, the movie screening area is very good. She's getting booked up. A lot of people are doing a lot of screenings. A lot of major movies, which you'll see coming out, are doing a lot of uh, filming in her, in her theater. They're doing private showings. Uh, they just had a major one where a whole two busloads showed up of a multi-million dollar film. And they did a show in there, so y'all make sure y'all check this young lady out. If you're serious about your craft, about music, um, music, you want to be an actor, producer, anything, that's the young lady to talk to. So you make sure you check out Emily Stewart and also C.J. Gilbert. And last but not least, celebrating 25 years of American Company, uh, Arizona Ice Tea. You can check them out at drinkarizona.com. Uh, definitely find out all the products there that they do have there. Um, they have a lot of products that are there that we definitely need to support and pick up. Um, they even got um, stuff that, you know, I don't even know you knew this. You know, they got chips. Oh, you sure. know about that? Yeah. Cotton candy? Nah, okay, no. cotton candy. So make sure you check out their website, drinkarizona.com. Try to, you know, look at all the products and see where they're at and also be aware a uh, pop-up shop can happen at any time. So y'all make sure y'all check that out. All right. And, I, and uh, LA, I sent you a flyer. Did you get that? All right, don't worry about it. We'll get it later. All right. So as I said, I got my man James Crawford here uh, sitting with me. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the community. And uh, we had a discussion uh, last week. And um, some stuff that he can talk about, some stuff that he can't. Now, I'm going to talk about what I can talk about, you know. And this is just my vision, my view, not his, not the school board's but mine. So I want to make sure y'all check that out. Now the people that's watching from um, from my live stream on Facebook, please go to um, dreshouse.com or go to Periscope to, to strongisland.tv. You'll be able to hear better and everything. So it's a must need. Just please try to do that. Now I see that we have the fly up. Just try to fly up real quick for me, please. Now we're having a, um, a pre-New Year's Eve celebration just from the Winding Family Day Committee. Uh, it's going to be a few parties all put in one. Did you know about this? Yes. Okay. So it's going to happen Saturday, December 12th, 2018. And it's um, LA Entertainment, New Movement Entertainment. 29. Sure, it says 29. 29. Well, I said Saturday. Yeah, okay. The 12th. Yeah. Saturday, December 29th, 2018. Uh, put together by LA Entertainment, New Movement Entertainment, and Nitty Nice. You know, Nitty Nice is on a... Why that Family Day board? So he's always doing so much uh, to give back to everybody, you know, because he loves his community. So um, it's a pre-New Year's Eve celebration. It's going to be in Hicksville. 
and Cheers, 206 West Country Road, Hicksville, New York, 11801. All right. Uh, it's going to be from 8 a.m. 8 p.m. Yes. to 1 a.m. Free before 10 p.m. Uh, they got bottle packages, so you know it's going to be a party. So bottle packages, two for three fifty, two for four fifty. There's hook, hooker, hooker, hooker. That's also available as well. So y'all make sure y'all check that out. Um, also, uh, the DJ is going to be. It's going to be a few DJs. We got a uh, DJ Kid Breeze, DJ Shot Killer, DJ Shuttle. DJ 150 Proof, DJ Cool Breeze, and DJ Za. Now, if you want to know more information, you can look at these people up in Facebook. The phone number's on the flyer. It's on everybody's Facebook. But the phone number, I mean, you can contact Angie Brown-Walton, Reggie Mays, the CBC, Letitia Phillips. I don't know who you're waving at. Kevin Spann, Jeff Garrett, Nitty Nice, and DJ Shuttle. Everybody knows these guys on your Facebook. We're going to do it in Hicksville because we want a chance for everybody to be easy to get to. And please, 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 grown and sexy attire. No hoodies, no boots, none, none of that stuff like that, right? Nope. Don't come just like this guy, though. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying. All right, and uh, real quick shout out to my boy Bart, tuned in all the way from Tennessee. That's what I'm talking about. I put this information out, and um, there was a, a lot of a big, um, what's the word I want to use? I want to say uproar, but a big reach out about this show. Okay. Okay. And one thing that I always talk about this show, I always get, especially when I talk to you or something goes down, I get all these emails and text messages and calls and say, you should talk about this. You should talk about that. And I really prefer not to talk about something I know nothing about. You know, I either go to the horse's mouth or I go to the town and look it up myself. Now, I did this show before. Thank you, LA. I did this show before. Uh, I did with uh, Mr. Crawford here. Also with Dell Matthews and um, Monique Moore. Monique Moore. Not Mike. Uh, Monique Hatchet. I'm sorry, Monique. And it was a few other people that I did this show with. And then it just came to the point where people wasn't happy that was put out there, the information that was put out there. And I understand the truth do hurt. Because there's a lot of truth that was put out there that they wasn't happy with. You know, it even came to a point where I was threatened to be sued by a couple people. So let me say this again. And I'm going to say this. Uh, what's going on? Is that a word? You know what I mean? I'm going to say this from the heart. Anything that I put out, I have, I even have the paperwork right in front of me. I got black and white facts or whatever. And I will stick to that any day. Now, if anybody want to rebuke any, okay, anything that I say, give me a call. I'll be happy for you to even come to the show and speak your piece. Now, I've asked a lot of people who are, who say I'm saying wrong stuff, or I'm saying this, I'm saying that. This is an open forum. And the one thing I will always say, whether it's Mr. Crawford or whoever's coming on this show, if you're in the community, everybody who comes on this show, you are definitely, you will definitely, definitely be respected. I don't do no disrespect on my show. That's a no-no. I don't do no disrespect whether I agree with you or not. You will always be respected. And I think that's what some people want to That's what some people uh, seem to have a problem with or nervous about coming on here. But you will always get the utmost respect. Now, like I said, I am going to talk about a lot of stuff that was put out, um, that was sent to me, but also I saw on Facebook or whatever, and it was in the news as well. Uh, it was about, what well, the headline was about... I don't know who the person was, but y'all had a meeting. It was an open forum meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a meeting where it came down to it and said um, whoever the person that, that came in was scolding, scolding the school board, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I'm a little lost on that because there's something else that we're going to talk about a little later on about your state of the district. Mm -hmm. You know, there was so much positive stuff that was going on that you put out in that message. But what I want to understand is it was going to a point where um, it was saying the wine dance school board was being scolded. And that's the information that was put out there. And I don't think all the information was put out there. Can you elaborate on that for me, please? Well, um, first, thanks for having me on the show again. Um, and I did do a monologue. Yeah, 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 you did. My bad. Thanks for having me. Um, and first, and me personally, I didn't take it as a scolding. I think we had a healthy 
discussion with our community, an honest, open discussion. Um, some of the community got a chance to air out some of the things that was they, they felt that uh, the district was lagging in, and we got a chance to give them a, a, a glimpse of uh, how, as a board, what direction we're trying to move in. So it, it wasn't a scolding, um, you know, it, it, it was some emotion. It was emotional because right now as a district, we're in a state of emergency and, right. and to where there's some things that need to happen uh, immediately and, and the community's feeling it, the students are feeling it, the parents are feeling it, uh, all, all the, the staff and faculty is feeling it. So the, um, the, the emotions are high. And, and 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 within that meeting, you know, the motions came out, but it wasn't a it wasn't a scolding. We had a, a healthy dialogue and discussion that was long overdue as a community. All right, and that's why I, that was very important that you said that because when it comes down to it, all the all the community is going to see is what the newspaper said or what that video said right. was why that school board scolded. Right. Now I do like the fact that other members of the community was able to go in and hear that. Right. And that's one thing that that you and I talk ever since I you know started you know getting involved with stuff that's one thing that you're always big about is come down to the meetings and speak your piece right because a lot of people just do not know right so I'm glad on that so because because I can talk about what exactly was put out there right so basically it was said that um, um there was a you know, the budget was getting bigger not the budget but the Deficit. Deficit was getting bigger and bigger, right, right. and they wanted solutions. Yeah, uh, the school board hasn't given any solutions on how to handle that budget. Right. Or, you know, at least breaking it down, start breaking it down. Right. All right. So, what I want to understand is how come nothing has been put out? Now I know you newly appointed, right? But you was on the board, right? Absolutely. Why hasn't anything been done to um, to even start breaking that that deficit down? Well, it, it has been, and and that's the misnomer. And um, certain people want th certain things done at a, a quicker pace than it needs to. And one of the things that I'm, I'm championing for and pushing for is not to make a haste decision, even though we're in a state of emergency. We 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 digging in dip, digging in deep and and starting to operate on the situation. We don't want to make make a haste mistake to where we affect the children directly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we in a situation to where we we. It's possible that we'll have to make cuts, and I'm a, I'm a big proponent to where I don't want cuts that happen that directly affect the students. To where we, we lose uh, instruction, we lose um, uh, personnel that directly affect the students. So this is why it's it's um, some people is not at a, uh, the right pace for them, but is it, we have to make a healthy decision because whatever we decide in the school districts want to impact our community. And we, we was in a situation before and, you know, it, it was the norm or the, the field to, to cut extracurricular activities. You cut the extracurricular activities, where do the students go? <coughs> and right. to where in the community we had a, uh, at, uh, a little bit after that, we had a huge gang problem within the community. So the decisions that we make within the, the school district going to have a huge impact, not just on the school, but the community as a whole. Right. So these are some of the things that we're, we're tossing and turning. There's, there's healthy discussion. You had um, some of the, the state people come in or state representatives come in, had healthy discussions with them. We, we're looking to have healthy discussions with, with uh, uh, more professionals. And we had a healthy discussion with the community. Right. So these are some of the things that we're doing and to where we don't make a haste decision. And, and that's the goal, not to make a haste, make a, the ac most accurate decision that we can make and we don't rush into it, and then we, we at the end, affect the students. Right. Now, I understand you say making a haste decision. Right. But um, for what I saw in the video, it was said that there was no solutions put on there. Now, with the haste decision, when we're not, I mean, I'm all about not making a haste decision, but this has been going on for a while. You know, a and, I can, and I can... No, 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 even before that, the deficit was like getting higher and higher. No, the, we, we only knew about the deficit since um, the summer. So how, how do you just know about the deficit just on the cause, summer? Because we, before, before that, we wasn't in a deficit. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes, All right. So does that go, you know, go with what you were saying on the state of the district um, about um, um, getting the money that the community needs? Yes, um, absolutely. Can that, you explain what that money is? Well, one, one of the things that um, with the state foundation aid, um, as, as a district, this is why even in the state of the address before, uh, it hit when that we we facing this possible deficit. 
that there's there's 22 million dollars owed by the state um basically from the state aid uh funding um that as a district we're not getting the proper funding that we need which we we knew this last t 10 years that we wasn't getting all the aid that we need that we knew we were going to face a possible situation like this right so one of the things that we faced in the last four years as a school district we grew by 25 percent and we're not equipped to to deal with that 25 percent that that increase so over the last four or five years we grew by 400 students that we're not we're, we're in no shape form or fashion ready to deal with and, and which we knew we need extra funding in order to take care of our students to where we had to spend last year uh 1.3 million dollars on on portables to give extra space we also spent money to send our students to another school district because we out of space um we got an influx of, of second language learners that we we had to get ready to, to deal with uh, pop, uh special ed population grew as well so that's another increase in it so there's there's several factors that led up to this that which we, we was in discussion prior to this to, to get the funding to, to try to alleviate some of the stress and, and pressure that we're facing now. So so what's the deal with, what's the problem with getting this funding? I'm not understanding that part. I know it's a procedure that you have to go through, right. but if we've been going through this since last summer, right. what, what's the hold up? Are we close to getting that money or something? Are the kids? Well, well we, oh, right now we're in a process where there is, is um, I want to say 12 other school districts on Long Island facing the same situation. Mm -hmm. So we've been having discussions with uh, Brentwood, uh, uh, Westbury, Central Islip, I'm missing a few others, Rose Roosevelt, um, a few other schools that are facing the same possible situation and discuss how can we put pressure on our state and uh, our, our uh, elected officials and the governor to release the funding to all, all 12 schools. Right. So, so is it safe to say the longer it takes for them to release that money, the more that we're going to lose more teachers. Possibly. We're going to lose more of these programs. Possibly. So, in your opinion, how do we how do we do for these kids when we're losing all these programs? Because when I went to school, now I don't know if it was a, a deficit or whatever and stuff, right. but we had programs. Absolutely. We had programs. We had, you know, band was big for me. Right. Um, the chess club. Right. Yes, I was on the chess club. Right. Um, Football, baseball, basketball. Absolutely. I mean, but now we have soccer and volleyball, which we didn't have when I was there. Right. But the point I'm trying to make is, do we have to take like a a, a, a giant step back just to go a couple steps forward? That's what we're trying to avoid, and that's that's what it, it's um it, it, you know people are putting out is not, nothing happening, but there's there's some severe conversations that's going on and discussions in terms of how do we meet this deficit and also maintain the progress that we made and <coughs> hope and hopefully maintain these these um programs and extracurricular activities that we have so it, it's um we, we stuck between the rock and the hard place in, in terms of deciding how do we we meet the the economic deficit and and also meet the needs of our students okay now one thing i read in that this article and it was said that there was no solutions, you know, given to work on this deficit, right? But then, in the article, it says the superintendent gave a solution right. about getting rid of the vice principal. Assistant principal, yeah. No, skip, assistant principal, same right. thing, right? Vice principal, assistant principal? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. so getting rid of the young man, what's his name? Um, uh, I really can't get his name, but... Okay, okay. Very nice guy, I met him. But um, they was looking at deleting his position right. which in opinion my opinion would be a very bad thing to do due to the, due to the influx of um spanish speaking kids in the school because it's like what is that 80 30 no, no it's, it's 60 40 60 40 right. okay cool right you know but when you look at that that a bit to me that's a wrong thing to do now from my understanding the from the from the report they wanted three examples you know so why did only one was put out there well because it's it's um wait a minute who decides what these these choices are going to be it, because because like the report said the superintendent gave y'all a, a solution right and y'all chose not to do it right and, and it's a it's it's a discussion and, and to where it is um 
the, the superintendent and the school board, we have to come to some resolve in terms of how, how do we actually um, attack this deficit. Right. And, and, and you know, as a, as a I think, um, as a school board, I think we, at, for that moment, we made the right choice in holding on to that uh, uh, assistant principal position because that's one of the positions that directly affect our students. Right, I definitely so, agree with you on that. So it, now it's, it's um, it, it comes across as, well, you're not doing anything. So it, it's it's is it's, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't type of situation. Mm -hmm. So it, it's um how do how do we figure that out of not hugely impacting the students and and the, the timing wasn't right because it, it was, the school year already started. There's there's some rapport with with that that administrator and some of the students and and for the uh, a transient uh, community you snatch something out it is going to have a huge impact later on right. so it is is we're, we're left with those type of decisions to where we where from the outside looking in it looks like there's no movement but it, there's there's severe discussion there's a, there's a lot of um research going on and, and right. people looking into different means and different ways to address and attack the situation okay well let me let me ask you I have a couple questions on that uh, is, is it, you know, is it like everybody in the community pay taxes, right? Yes, sir. Is it, you know, like, if are they, is it a situation where people are not paying taxes, that's why there's a no. situation with that? No, there, there's, there's several factors <clears throat> that we, we have to take into consideration to where, um, the, based on the needs of the student, every, every um, student that comes with a, with a need, there's a, there's a price tag that's attached to it. Right. So we 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 don't have a commercial base, a huge commercial base in our in our um, community. Right. So the burden is really left on the taxpayers, and we can't. We we're trying to avoid also increasing taxes. So it, in in order to meet some of the needs, you you got to find ways to, of pooling in more money. So one of the things we're we're trying to figure out is is where do we, where are we going to get this revenue from? Right. So and that's the part that confuses me. Because you keep saying, you know, well, let, me, let me switch it up a different way. Why are we not getting the money that, that the school deserves? Well, that's that's a, that's that's the question. That's that's. Well, has how come that question hasn't been asked? It's been asked. And what was the response? That it, it was a lawsuit back in I don't want to get the uh, year wrong, and I want to say 2004, mm -hmm. to where with the foundation aid, to where the state the the. The um, Supreme Supreme Court ruled that the funding, the equity fund, the, the funding for the, the fund foundation aid for the schools was wrong. So they they had to um, pay a release um, x amount of dollars, mm -hmm. and so off of that x amount of dollars, one that's supposed to receive twenty two million dollars. So what happened to the money? That's a, that's the question that we try so, to So so isn't ask that kind of like an oxymoron to the the point of they complain about the deficit, but yet there's money that will help clear this deficit out. Absolutely. Okay, I just want to put that out there. Absolutely. Now, also, now this was thrown thrown at thrown out at me. Uh, this was a couple phone calls just uh, today, um, and I'm gonna say exactly how they said it. Instead of trying to cut teachers and principals, or whatever, stop giving. So I don't know if I'm gonna say exactly how I was saying. Stop giving the school board and the superintendent and those higher ups, stop giving them raises. See, now that's that's a, a catch-22 mm -hmm. because now we're, we're one of the lower paying districts in terms of salary. Mm -hmm. And if you, you want top performers, you gotta pay top salary. So the, the teachers, you, as you see, we have gains in our community, in, in our school district. So people are working. Teachers are working, students right. are working. So we we need to move away from something things are not happening. It's not happening to to, to the satisfaction of everybody. Mm -hmm. But there's there's things that are happening within our district and you have to pay be paid for what you work. Exactly. How come the teachers can't get paid more and then higher? That's the question where we are. We 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 in yeah, a, but we just we just discussed the um uh, a, a contract with, with the teachers and to where that kind of part of the budget as well. Right, I understand that, but you'll leave me, you'll leave me, because I want to make sure this person get their question answered. When you when you go to a point where um, the high-ups getting paid, you know, like, 
um, they're getting paid or whatever and stuff. And if they're doing a good job, all, I feel they should get paid. Right. But also, you know, but from my understanding where this person was explaining, it was two people that called me about this. The teachers should be getting a raise as well. Right. So everybody's still worried about the higher up getting their raises, but the lower not, but who the first people they want to cut. But it's, it's, we're looking at possible cuts in everywhere. I understand that. Right. But the, and the whole part we, we've been dealing with this deficit. Right. I'm a quote unquote, the higher up has been getting raises each year, just by each year or something like that. Not maybe each year. No, no, it, not, not to not, my not, I mean, I'm gonna say, but they got raises. Since, since we were, was done with the, the, uh, this deficit, no one got an increase after that. You can check the book, check the- I'm gonna have to check that, but yeah, from my yeah, understanding, from even, what, the way they explained the, it to me. The, you got the external auditors, they did a report, they, they was at the board meeting explaining the situation. Uh -huh. so, so these conversations, like, what, what I want everybody to do and understand before we run and, and have these particular conversations, let's look into the entire situation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot of this is public information. Right, exactly. So they can get the, the information. So it, it's- Where exactly um, can they get the information from? They can foil it from the, the uh, district clerk where they put in and they get information back to see for themselves because this is public knowledge, this is public information. So it, it's, it's not nothing being hidden. It, it's just, there has to be an understanding of, of the whole dynamics of everything that's happening. All right. And I think that's not happening to where, um, don't be afraid to come have a conversation. It, it may not go the way you like, or you, you may have to say some things that you don't want to hear. I may have to say some things that you don't want to hear, but let's have this conversation because we, as a whole, as a community, we, we have to be on the same page. Or, or at least pushing in the same direction. Okay. Because right now, if we we keep um, pulling apart, the, the the students and the kids are gonna fall through the cracks. Right. And and when you when you look at it, that's all about them. Right. So they can do stuff and come back like yourself or Dale Matthews, all these people that come back, Kevin Span, because all of y'all don't have to live out here. Absolutely. You know, y'all come back because y'all love the community. Absolutely. Now. Um, now with the taxes situation, what what is the zoning and stuff? What's the situation with the zoning? Because you know I'm looking at um, with all the zoning, like a lot of businesses are being zoned out of the wine community. See, one of the things that we <clears throat> we have to have a discussion as a community, like we we want uh, commercial building, commercial um, uh, businesses to come in, but we we got to figure out right now there's some coming in with a tax abatement. Of uh, 40 years, uh, and that's hurting the, hurting the district because now they're, they're not paying taxes, but we're we're um, almost the 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 whole the course, and, and the school district is not receiving anything from it. Right, but still, you know, even like I've known the district's been zoned a couple of times, right, or, or whatever stuff. Now, I hate to say it like this, I'm only looking at one community. Right, right. There's businesses that is considered windage businesses, but the way the zoning is, they're not windage. No. So these, these are some of the things we have to hold our, all, all our elected officials accountable to. Yeah, because like you keep saying we need to have this discussion. I'm all about you got to have the discussion. Right. You know, but at the same time, a lot of people are feeling that all we're doing is talking and there's no action. Well, the action you got to take, you got to show up. You got to have these discussions. And if you're not satisfied, that. My position, other elected officials' position, there, there's an election that takes place to where you can remove. Like, I'm not safe from being removed. If you're not satisfied with what I'm doing, I can be removed. Right. And, and, and that's the that's the piece as a community we're not we're not galvanizing around to where our needs are not being met and we're not moving. Mm -hmm. And that's the action that needs to be taken. And we have to hold them accountable. That's one thing that you always said, like, don't come at me. You know, if you don't like what's going what's going on or whatever stuff, come out, express your opinion. Absolutely. And vote. And that's the major thing. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people feel, I'm just, I don't want nothing to die on me here. Okay. Uh, a lot of people feel with everything going on is, uh, how can I explain this? A lot of people feel like with the process of everything going, I don't know. A lot, a lot of people feel with everything, the way everything is going, it gets put in a situation where they, they've been hearing the same thing for years. Right. You know, and now they're getting fed up. Absolutely. Right? So, 
I will I will break this around to the state of the district. Okay. The address that you that you gave them. And one thing about that state of the district was you made it a point to say the good and the bad. Absolutely. And I don't think a lot of people would have did that. Okay. So I have to commend you on the state of the district. Appreciate that. And I think that's something that should ha happen a lot because people need to hear all about the good that's going on from what, you know, I have to give the school board works, school board work, works very hard. Right. And sometimes it backs up against the wall. I have to say that. Right. I never said it was an easy job. Absolutely. You know, some people do some wrong stuff. Some people do some right stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy job and stuff. And you have to make a decision and deal with that decision. Now, in going into that, it was a lot of stuff that you said on the state of the district of stuff that I didn't even know what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting a lot of awards, a lot of like robotics and uh, all the stuff like that. Absolutely. I think a lot of people didn't even know that was going on. Absolutely. You know, so, but also you bring on the thing is like what we need to do, what's your plans that we need to talk about doing. Right. You know, so in the point of all that state of the union, state of the district address that you gave, a lot of people ask me about, and, and it all goes down to when. In terms of what? When are we gonna start moving forward to handle this business and stuff? Now, can people like, like, like with that uh, that video that I saw that report in the paper, saying about how the guy came down and scolded or whatever, and then how it was told that only one person brought a solution or whatever and stuff. Can the community as a whole come to these meetings and make a suggestion on what they think? Well, we, we have to hold a, like if we're, we're handling, there's certain Robert's Rules of Order, which we go by. So there's certain meetings or points in a meeting where the community can, can speak. Right. So once we handle a business, the, the, that's when it's just to handle the business and can't. So one of the things that I propose is, is open up just a meeting to where we have a dialogue with the community, mm -hmm. to where they're a part of this. Cause, because it, it, I don't have all the answers. I'm right. not going to portray like I have all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but right. what I do know is that we, we have to come to some resolve in terms of how do we figure this particular situation out. But before we have a conversation, we have to empower the parents and also educate the parents mm -hmm. or whoever come, come out to the meeting in terms of um, our possible options and how do we actually end up in this particular situation. Mm -hmm. and this is not an overnight, uh, happen overnight, this is, this is years of, of um, things adding up to where we, we're not properly funded as one. Right. You know, so it, it, it ha that people have to understand that as well, because it, it's um, it's crucial to, to where we don't look at each other in terms of well, it's them, it's you, it's them. No, it's, it's, it's to where we need to come together and, and figure this out and get the proper funding so we can give all our students um, all the possible options that they, they could possibly have, because we're at a point where we're not even offering uh, uh, AP courses, right? You know, and and, it, and it's it, it's um, we're doing our students a disservice to, to mm -hmm. where you, you got neighboring schools that's offering this, and we putting them in a situation where they may they they um, it's harder for them to compete against the surrounding schools. Is Upper Bound still going? No, I don't know. Why? Funding, probably one because some of the, like we we get a lot of programs off of grants. So the grants run out. So we don't put in another grant or something like that? We oh. do, but it, it, it's with the grant, you have other areas competing for that grant. Mm. So it, it's um, some grants we get because we, we um, fit the mold and it, it may not be other competition for it. And some grants there's a lot of competition for it and it's based off of how they choose. So it, it's we're in, a, we're in a tough situation. The only reason why I'm asking these questions because these are the questions that people um, don't know. And I'm all, I'm all again about if we don't have the conversation, we're not going to know. Right, absolutely. You know, and I, I don't want to come at anybody like negative, like, you know, Crawford's the only one that comes up here and he knows I'm going to go at him. Right. He knows I'm going to go at him and I'm going to hold him accountable. But at the same time, he will give that answer. So that's why I have to salute him for coming up here, uh, speaking on, you know, as much information that he can speak on. Now, there's a lot of stuff that he can't speak on, and I'm kind of mad about that because I want to know. I'm nosy. Right. You know, right. but I know you can't speak on it. Right. So, like, you know, like, in your vision, because you got kids in the school. Absolutely. You know, you know your kids are going to be good regardless. Right. Because you have, you know, you and your lovely wife and stuff. Y'all stay on them. Right. You know, but, you know, you got those single parent households. Right. You got you know, latchkey kids. Right. You know, I was one myself. Right. You know, you got 
just a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. And these kids, you know, it's like, we're going through all this stuff and the only people, you know, we say about, we want to help these kids, we want to help these kids, we want to help these kids. But as long as we just keep having discussions, we're hurting the kids. Well, well the discussion is that the, we got to put a plan together and also people got to be willing to step up and, and, and it, we know we're in a budget crunch, some may have to just volunteer. You, you know, and, and volunteer and to do what? What they what they passionate about? So you passionate about the radio? You can volunteer and put up a radio in the school to, to get six, seven kids. Oh, not for nothing. I already had that discussion already. So right. I'm not even going Right, right. But you, you understand what I'm saying? Like yeah. th those type of ideas that come across to where, and, and it, it, it got to be multiple plans happening at once to where we, we get the volunteer to we possibly get the funding. And, and while we working on that, on that we have to also attack while we not properly funded. So right. There, there's okay. Multiple, now, now there's give me multiple that. things that have to happen at once, and to where we can't get one track and, and sidebar by whatever the paper put out, or whatever somebody put out. Mm -hmm. we, we have to always continue that the kids need to be addressed at 24/7. Right. And I'm glad you said that. Now you know for a fact, along with myself and yourself, and a few other people, we was trying to do that. Absolutely. Right. And we got shut down. Absolutely. You know. So. If how do we handle? Because there's a lot of people that's doing a lot of good in the community. Right. You got the mothers, um, mothers club. You got Heat Boards, Man in the Mirror. Right. Um, my man Kamel, his group. Absolutely. Which I can't remember, Kamel. I'm sorry, but we just talked about it. But you know, these are people who are fighting to give back. You got Vanessa Streeter, right. her dance thing or whatever. I just said her name right. Yes. Right. Okay. There's a lot of people who want to give back. Right. They're not allowed to give back. Now you say about. Well, see, I, I, I have to correct you because you can't say not allowed because. What happened with our situation? It, we got to find another way avenue to do it. But the, the thing is, we had the avenue to just straight do it. You remember why I got shut down? Absolutely. But okay. But, but here's saying, the thing: we should. So, so if it's, we, we hold, still, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If we're going to sit there and say like we want to do something, and it's like out of, either out of our own pockets, it's definitely our own time. Absolutely. Right. We're not asking for nothing. We're Absolutely. just trying to help. Absolutely. You know, then how can we as a community say that we want to help these kids when we got people in certain positions saying like, no, you can't do that. You got to find another way. I understand that, but you're saying, and I totally agree with you. Right. Totally agree with you. So we can't, but why but do that, we have to go through that? Because that that's, you, you can't control what somebody else do. You only control what you do. So we, we, we can't use that as an excuse. We can't, we can't. We can't say because they won't allow us in the building, or they won't. Uh, we we can, we got to figure something else way. We we can we can put a pool together of uh, amongst ourselves, even the people just you and I know amongst ourselves, to where we can we can find other venues to do certain things. That we can't let them shut down, reaching out to the kids because we 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 can affect three, and that three can affect thousands. So we, we can't we can't use that as an excuse that we, we can't go through that means we gotta find other means. Because if if, if our ancestors did ancestors did that, you and I wouldn't be able to talk this free. It's, and I'm gonna give you that. So if we you had another organization, right? Absolutely. Okay. And we already know know what you know, you and I and a few people that's watching right now know what happened in that situation. Absolutely. It was going strong and then again, you know, whatever. How come you didn't go another way with that? We are. No, no, okay, this happened like two years ago. Now. Right, we, we, so it's taken two years to get it back on the road? We're back on the road. We never, we never, we never deviated from what we did. We, we doing it in a different means. It's, less, it's quieter. But his, okay, and I'm with you on that. <laughs> I, but I cannot let you go with that. I, I can't. Uh, why, why you can't let me go with that? Why we got to do stuff quietly and stuff? We need to let everybody know that if, if, if some of us care about these kids, everybody's going to care. That's the problem. Everybody's doing everything under the cuff or whatever and stuff. But we, we're not having conversations, the ones that are doing. What? The ones that are doing in, in the community, we, we're not having conversations. We're not talking amongst each other. Yes, we are. Not, not everyone. Okay, here's a challenge. <laughs> that, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I know, I know uh, we're going to thank uh, you. Uh, okay, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Go okay. Ahead. All right. Here's the thing. I'm going to put this together. And I'm going to let Mr. Crawford lead the way because he's the spokesperson. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. <laughs> I want to have a meeting. Okay. within the next two weeks. I mean, okay. right after the New Year's, okay. right? I want to put a meeting, and I see, you know, uh, Bart, you can do it from a distance, Heath Gordon, Camille, John, and everything. 
all the brothers and sisters who went to Wine Dance and you know you love the community. You still always support. I see y'all support all the time. Whether it's a fundraiser, whether it's like helping somebody out or helping these kids out, y'all do it. I want to have a meeting. Okay. Right? Women and men, Angie Brown, Walton, uh, Linnell, Jarman, um, who am I thinking of? Uh, Monique, Hatcher, Jovelle, Kat, all of y'all. I know y'all do so much for the commit uh, for the community. For the community. Kevin Spann, Jazz, Nitty. I'm call I'm calling it out. Let's have a meeting. Mr. Bankster, Shave, you too. Let's put a meeting together where we can just go as a group and see what we can do. Either a mentoring program, you know, or you know, after school thing where we can go sit with the kids and help them with their homework. Or what or something. Okay. All right. All right. Or let's do adopt a kid. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's that's I'm with that. Now anybody come with me, y'all gotta come with my boy Brandon and stuff, cause you know right. my boy right there. But but the thing I'm gonna say to everybody, I don't I don't care you all, but we gotta leave our egos at the door. Exactly. Now the group that we had before, we didn't have no egos. Absolutely. You know, we was all about let's do this, men and women, like let's right. do this. Right. So I don't think in that area that we have to worry about that. Okay. I really don't. But you are right. You are right. You know, because one thing that I always noticed that you, uh, Monique, Daryl, Matthews, and a few other people, Jovelle, all that stuff. Not one time have y'all said this is about me. Right. Everything y'all done, it's always been a us, 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 right. us. Right. And that's one thing. The Mothers Club. My uh, my second mom's. One of my second moms. She's in it. Right. And I've never heard her say, well, I did this, I did that. Right. It's always been we. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So that's that's the type of people I think that can help the kids until we get this money in. Right. You know? Right. Until we get the money in. Because right. we get the money in, then it would be even more. Right. So I'm, I'm putting it out there. Um, even people can help from a distance. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So I think, like, like we did the thing, like, uh, coming to... I can't even say coming to America, but coming to the school, right? And you know, just salute the the kids coming in. Absolutely. I thought that was pretty cool and stuff. Right. I mean, right. I had to get up too early in the morning, but I thought it was pretty cool, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like, is there a chance that like, and I'm asking you as a school board member, a few mentors mm -hmm. can go and just talk to the kids and stuff and like. And we, we're open to that, and, and the the um, you got you also got Rodney Jones who who have um, the positive men of wine dance exactly. I forgot and, about that. And it, he he sent out a call for um, some brothers to come out and read to the students. So there, there's there's a lot that's going on inviting the community in, but right. we, we as a whole got to do a lot better in terms of community getting it out and, and planning better and organizing. One of the things we have to do in, in order to, to stop. A, a, a situation like what we have now, a deficit that we possibly facing, it, we got to become organized and, and, and people got to get on the same page and, and work towards the same goal. Okay. So when, you, when you're going, through, you know, because my thing is, what, what is the dropout rate for Winders High School right now? That off the top of my head, I don't know. Okay. Is it more than what it should be? I would say so. I, uh, I think if one dropout, that's more than what it should be. I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you that. So it goes, it go, I don't know why I just repeated that. But then it goes into everything that I'm saying. If these kids have something, sometimes they can't talk to their parents. Right. Sometimes, you know, whatever. I mean, we was lucky enough that we had coaches and teachers right. and people in the neighborhood to say, like, get your act together. So, and that, that, that's my, my um, even dealing with now, this, the situation is dire. And, and I'm, in my mind, if, if this situation was happening when I was in school and we was forced to, to get rid of certain people and, and Say Mr. Mills was one of the ones that get rid of. No, nah, you know that wasn't gonna happen. But but I'm saying like the impact that he had on me, Dow, Russ Jones, everybody that wrestled under us, it, it would have been missed because we was forced to cut a person. So we we can't. In my mind, we can't cut or even think about cutting those that directly deal with with, with our students and have right. a huge impact on them. So and that goes back to. Everything that you were saying before, it's like it's a situation where, um, you know, like the, they wanted to get rid of the, um, the vice, the assistant principal, right? But the parents 
spoke up. Absolutely. The parents spoke Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And, and, and knew that was a bad idea. And I commend those parents that came out, showed up, and showed out for, mm -hmm. you know, stand up for what they believe in. Now, my myself, I don't know if it was a bad idea or not, because I really don't know too much about uh, the, the young man. But I just know, I know it's like, it's something that, that shouldn't happen. I don't think teachers, unless they're not doing their job, mm. I don't think any faculty should be cut. No. Now, if they're not doing their job, y'all need to holler at them. You know, like, yo, no. you got to go. No. But if they're doing their job, and from the times that I've been up to school, these teachers are working hard. Yeah. You know, right. in the middle school, um, the high school, I haven't been over to Straight Path School. What's the other school? Um, the uh, Martin Luther King. No, the one. The Annex yeah. over in Wheatley Heights. What do they call that? The Annex. Well, it's the well, Annex. No, somebody gave it a na name of another school or something like that. Totally threw me. Mm. It totally threw me. And I, th I was like, what are y'all talking about? And stuff. Right. But, you know. So, okay. We, uh. So, so like, the, the, the thing we got to understand that we, we had, um, if you take the middle school, for example, we was on the um, um, receivership to where, um, you, you know, it's deemed not, not making the academic marks. And then just over last year, we made all the marks. Right. So that means there was time put in, there was effort put in, there was money put in. So, you, you, you know, and, and we start cutting back on that. We only probably put that school back. What? You, you know what I'm saying? So these are some things we're trying to avoid. Well, it's, you can't say no, no work wasn't put in because to even get back to that point on that, but a lot of people think we should have never been there anyway. Absolutely, you but know? but is is we're faced Stuff with happens. cuts yeah. from before that led up to some of the things that that's um that transpired to put us there. Right. All right, we're gonna go on a quick break and then we're gonna come back and let's talk about these cuts, about who's supposed to get what money, and also um uh I don't know what that is and stuff. Uh, the state aid formula. What? The state aid formula for... Okay, okay. So, basically what I just said. Right, right. All right, we're going to get into some numbers. We're going to crunch the numbers. So, y'all stay tuned. We'll be back. We got to take a quick break.
Okay, we are back. Dre's house full effect. Got my man, Mr. Crawford, president of the Winding School Board. Uh, we've been going over some serious topics. Uh, he didn't let me ask him anything I wanted to ask, and he doesn't care if I come at him rough with it, but it's stuff that needed to, uh, to be asked. Now, we're on the second half, and I want, definitely wanted to talk about the sheet that, um, that you brought to me, well, that you brought. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad you didn't bring your notebook. Right, so, yeah. This is a jump. <laughs> on the how you got a master's and all this stuff, whatever. You do have a master's, right? Two. Three? Actually, three. Anyway, so I'm telling you Hawkins or something, Stephen Hawkins. Now, you brung this, um, the foundation aid. Formula, right. The foundation aid formula. Right. Now, um, explain what the foundation aid formula, well, the foundation aid formula is. So based off the foundation aid formula, it, it showed um, what, what amount of funding that school districts should get. So it, it's, um, based off the needs of the students. So if, if you have a, a special ed student, you see that that, that special ed student is worth 1.41. What, what is the 1.41, what is that? It, it's basically um, uh, that particular student plus um, an amount of another student in, in the half of another student. Right. So we should be getting that amount, so. It, that amount of money for that person or? Right, right. so say if we get $10 for what, per student. So with a special ed student, we should get $25. Okay, I got what you mean. I got what you mean. And that's per student, right? Right. So All right, cool. Then you go with a student with poverty, uh, living in poverty, um, they should should get a half, uh, that student plus a half. Okay. And then you go down to students receiving free reduced lunch is is a that student plus a half. English, English language learning students is that student plus a half. Okay, okay, I'm good with that. And what is this average cost of, of a successful school? What is that? What is why this average cost? Right now, I, I believe our budget was a little over 70 something million. A year? Yes. Yes. That's for the district, though, right? Right, the entire district. Oh, okay, I got what to say. Right. So it costs that much? Right. You get a job in the district. Right. <laughs> All right, and the, re the regional cost index, what is that? That with, this is it, coming from the Department of Labor. Right. So that that's something that is a whole complicated formula that I'm not. Okay. So we, we need give to get that. the business manager. Okay. That's where the business manager come into play. Okay, cool. And the school board does have a business, business yes, manager. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. I heard you say ma'am, but get it together. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, one thing that I've been looking at, are these two different sheets or yeah, it's the two same thing? Two different. Okay, cool. So, so there's financial aid that's old. Is okay, let's get let's get oh. to that second. Okay. Now, one thing I read on the side of here it says sixty percent, sixty two percent of foundation aid is owed to school districts with fifty percent or more black and Latinos. Latin, Latino, Latino students. students yeah. Okay, you're not supposed to be old, right? No, that's just did it on purpose though. Okay. You yeah. Know. Right. All right, uh, I mean, three masses. You, yeah, you gotta yeah, check that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, one thing that popped out of my mind, which I'm kind of like thrown off a little bit, which is saying this, the amount that the school is owed, I'm seeing the other districts in, uh, around us are supposed to be owed more. Absolutely. Then why does it seem like they're doing so much better than us? Well, it, it's, um, they they're, may also have um, the, the, uh, the other tax base to help them out. We're, we're like one of the few that don't have a commercial tax base. Why is that? Because of the zoning? I, that is the question that needs to be answered. I don't have to answer that one. Right, because that's, cause that's what I'm trying to understand. Because why is everything getting zoned? I understand, like, it's going to be even harder now because a lot of business they're trying to get in, uh, they're getting these tax cuts. Right. You know. So, so, so it is according to a um, few uh, officials I talked to, it, it's, well, the attractive businesses, this is what we attract them by giving them a, 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 a tax abatement. So are we looking at should there be a school in YNS? Because it seems like, like when it comes to that, and I don't know how high it goes up, but they're more worried about uh, the community instead of the, the students. Well, that's that's one of the things that are addressed in the State of the Union, to where you have the entire um, 
Wanda's Rising project, which is a is an excellent idea, but the the community can't rise if the students don't soar. Right. So that that's one of the things that we're we're um, trying to sit back down when everybody had this discussion to where, yeah, the, the new train station look good, the apartments look good, but we got a we got a school building that's falling apart. Right. So and getting overcrowded. Right, and we don't have the space, and so it, it's um. These type of conversations that we have to have to, to where it's, it's excellent idea to, to beautify, but if you don't have uh, um, the the 21st century a learning community for our students, they're gonna get left behind. Yeah, because for me, and and this is just me talking, I think we're not even gonna move. We, we're gonna really hurt ourselves if we take away these programs from these kids. Like absolutely, you know, when I came back to New York and found out there's no band, that's just ridiculous to me. Absolutely. You know, wine dance was basketball and the band. Right. You know, and the band everybody can do. Right, see, and there's even studies out now that that students that play instruments turn out better in life and do perform better academically. So that's that's one of Thank the things. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's one of the things that we, we're definitely looking at, but we in a situation <laughs> where we gotta cut back on, so it's like, you, so you know, if, if it's, you, it's a tough situation. Yeah, because you can't cut the arts and stuff. I mean, I mean, for a school not even to have home ec. Right. Well, we have home ec. Oh, really? Where? Yeah. At, at high school. Where's it at? Same place it was before. Down there? Yeah. Really? It, yeah. Who's the teacher for that? Don't get me lying to you. Oh. Don't get me lying to you. We, we don't have a uh, wood shop like we used to. Yeah, we're stopping drafting. So I was mechanics, in mechanics. Yeah, more. Well, Mr. Stearns, Mr. Dempsey. Right. That crew. See, see, these are some of the things that as a community got to talk about because now, you, you, everybody, everybody's not a a, a a person who can just read and it, some people uh, do things hands on. Right. It, plumbers make as much as some teachers yeah. or more. You, you know what I mean? Or some doc. Or it. There's a lot of hands on things that we can we should be able to offer our students. But because of now budget crunches and, and past budget crunches, we, we're not able to offer. Yeah, because when you when you take away those when you take away wood shop and uh, what was it mechanics mm -hmm. and drafting, you take that from the kids. There's a large population of the black and Latino community. They're very good at their hands, right? And they make serious money, right? You know, so that's like you you know to me, you're taking it from them again. Right, and even in, in, in shout out to um, Raheem Booker, and it, it, it's and I, I'm glad he did the mural. Um, and, oh, no, and handball court, handball and court, and, a, and, a wine and, and you know he, he he was a close friend of mine, went to school, and it, it always uh, mom boggled me if if imagine we had a phenomenal art program. He was in in high school, he would be fur so much further. Down down the road with it with his art. His art is phenomenal. He was doing that in high school. Right, and there's and that again, Mr. Sunheimer. There was a lot of crazy, ridiculous, talented artists that was in art. It was right. the most amazing stuff I've ever seen. But see, I'm not just talking about a teacher. I'm talking about an actual program. Right, but we I mean we did have the art program. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, like, that's, so, that's what I'm talking but, about. But you know, you know, in the process. It just all boils down to we gotta figure out where this money's at and get this right. money in. Cause I'm looking at here foundation owed, financial aid owed, 2018 to 2019, like 22 million, right. almost 23 million that's owed to wine dance alone. Right. Right. You know? That that'll answer the deficit. That'll um, put us in terms of advanced placement courses. That'll put us in terms of bringing uh, art and music back to prominence that it once was. It it a, it a It'll go to extracurricular activities. We already know that um, black and brown communities they they come into school with, with less language or less knowing less words than affluent communities. And these are some of the things as a community or even as a school we have to address. We we have to have um, uh, prenatal to four years old, five year, years old care to where once our students come in they're able to, to know their sounds, they right, they're, and, and they're able to compete. So it, it's um. As a district, we're we're lagging behind even from the start. Right, and and that's definitely sad to a certain point. And real quick, um, John Jones just said something, and I gotta respect him. I'm gonna tell you after the show. Okay. But I gotta respect him, and I'm gonna have to say I totally agree with you, Mr. Jones. Um, a lot of people have said that. Um, 
we, I guess we gotta wait for it to happen and stuff. But a lot of people have said that, so we're gonna leave that there. He don't know what I'm talking about. So. Absolutely, I'm good. but you'll know when I tell you. Right. All right. So it says nine out of ten high nine out of nine out of ten high school. Uh, what? what? Nine out of the ten. Who wrote this? I don't know. It was, uh, okay. Okay, nine out of the ten high need school. Di- okay, nine out of the ten high wrote, need wrote, wrote school right. districts on Long Island. <laughs> all right, all right. I need to uh, from the twenty-five English districts teachers. within the fit, uh, with fifty percent black and Latino students, which are owned, which are owed sixty-two percent of the financial aid. Right now, are these other schools? Now I don't want to call their schools names out. Are they getting their money? No. We, we so nobody's the, getting it across the board. Right. I'm not talking about none of these, but you know what I'm talking. But about. But these are the main ones. These, what? Well, well, most of them are the ones that that have black and brown students in it. Right. I'm saying. I'm talking about the other ones that don't. That I can't speak for. Okay. I don't, I don't, because I that was to. a question that was asked to me. Are they getting their money? Yeah. And how come we're not getting ours? Right. So it all boils back to. Um, See, and it, then there's also a fear of if this money's paid, other school districts might lose out. So, it, it, you know, it, it's it's a uh, it's a it's a sticky situation. All right, hold on, I gotta take a drink of this. Mm-hmm. You know about the ashes. Okay, <laughs> bring it on. Let me know if we could talk about this or not. Mm-hmm. And I think just before you came president or whatever and stuff, mm-hmm. there was uh, lawsuits that was put out there uh, on the school board. I think about, uh, and I want to read this right. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Uh, and this is something that's been brought up to me. Okay. Definitely. Um, say that uh, there's a lot of money on going to high. Okay. We already discussed that about the higher up getting raises right, right, and right. stuff like that. Right. Now, uh, we already s- discussed that part. What I want to discuss is because being that we're talking about uh, this money that's needed for these extracurricular activities and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's stuff that every school has. Right. All right. Um, what is going on with the af- athletics? Well, well, right now we we offering athletics, but my personal opinion, not anyone else's opinion, I think we need to offer more, mm-hmm. uh, more sports. But in order offer the the in order to offer more sports, more funding. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? So we. We keep coming back to the same resolve of in order to do more, we need more. Yeah, but you know, there's a lot of talented uh, players: football, basketball, volleyball, soccer. I had a chance to go see the uh, soccer game, right? The last one of the season. These guys are good. Absolutely. You know, I got salute so now, to the white ma- soccer team. Now imagine we if we put in a situation, we got to cut that program. I know, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Instead of cutting, it just goes back to what I was talking about: is we talk about cutting, 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 but then people are getting raises. Absolutely. You know, so to me, that doesn't need to be a discussion. Right. You know, because then if you don't get that raise, now we're going to find out how serious you are about these kids. Right. Because a lot of teachers are getting paid very low to do what they love. Right. It's a lot of teachers, a lot of guidance counselors. I don't think security, I don't think they get paid enough. Right. But I do understand about the budget and stuff right. like that. Right. But I think, to me, it's a slap in the face where you got programs that could possibly cut, like football, basketball, well, probably not that. Right. But, you know, uh, soccer, volleyball. Well, then, then every, everything is, is on the table in terms of, of the discussion of cutting. But we're, we're trying to figure out how to minimize the impact on the students. Right, and I'm with you on that. Right. Okay, you've been singing that same song this whole right. time. Right. I, there's no way, no way in the world can we go against you on that. All right. All right. But a lot of people are getting frustrated to the aspect of, okay, you know, we're having this discussion. You know, where are the people that's going to make these choices? What do you mean? I mean, to me, and, and it goes back, in which I'm glad that a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, went to the meeting, right? Right, and I, and I do appreciate when I do this show, I get bombarded with questions, this and that, and I understand why some people don't want to say, you know, want right. to say whatever. Right. I do understand, and that's why you know it's always, um, you know, okay, I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. <laughs> you read that? No, nah, okay, I can't see it. Okay, but uh, there's um, there's a lot of discussion. 
I think that we should have, like, when we have these board meetings, right? when we have these library meetings, these school board voting meetings, <coughs> all these meetings and everything, one, I think prior to that, and I, you can't say this wasn't an issue before, we need to let these parents know that this is happening. Because we have have issues where these meetings, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to put on the school board or whatever stuff, but a lot of people are saying, they was trying to sneak their candidate in, you know, and that and that that's what was being said, you know. It's not me saying it, you know, but that's what was being said. So, to me, like you saying, you want to have the discussion. I'm all with that. Right. You doing the state of the district, mm -hmm. to me, that was the first big step I've seen that happen. Right. You know, because now you letting people, and I was so, I was so shocked at how many parents came out, parents, teachers, and everything. Who came out? Who wanted to hear what you had to say? Absolutely. You know, and sometimes you got to be outspoken. Right. And you know, you're very much that. And right. Plus, if they don't like it, it's not like they're gonna run up on you. Right. If you're a big dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? But still good wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's like, um, <laughs> kind of threw my question off. Right. So if you if we you know we having this discussion. A lot of people feel like I go back to this again. A lot of people are saying it's like we've been having this discussion over and over and over and over again. No, we haven't. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, 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 uh. Long as I, long as I've been involved with it, it's been the same discussion. No, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no. I'm no tell, I can't. I give you that one. I'm gonna tell you where you're wrong at. Okay, tell me. And, and it's been in closed segments and pockets that these discussions have been happening. There's been there's n have not been an open forum where we had the discussion and to where we walked out with a plan. Never happened. Okay, then it goes back to what I'm saying. When these meetings happen, people but, but, don't know. But that's, you cannot say that's you, wrong. You can't. You, the 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 school board's meetings are voted on in in the beginning of the school year, and the calendar's posted. So I understand people, that. People, I can't give people to, to say they don't know. No, no, I'm you, gonna have you, to give you that because you, this is this is where the parents and the school board are failing. Right. I'm gonna give it to that. Right. There's, because there's, no matter what, because there was a. A school board vote, uh, meet the candidates and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't find out. I was but that's two different things. It's not. I understand it, but I'm just right. saying I'm, in general. I'm just, I'm just making sure. We okay. Don't want to uh, say that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there you was a vote. It. I mean, it wasn't a vote. It was a meet the candidates thing. And this is what a lot of parents like. When this happened, I got over a hundred texts right. from different people. It went from the meeting was happening that day, and then from the meeting happening that day, nobody knew about it. Right. right. So, so now, now, let me put this out there. That doesn't have to stop any parent or any voter to host their own. What do you mean? You can host your own meet the candidates. If, if you feel like you, you need, in any level, you invite them out. They show up, they show up, that's on them. But any parent can say, I want to host, I need to meet these candidates. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you that. I was just using that for an example. No, but I'm saying, About right. the communication getting out Right, right. I totally agree with you. Right. Okay. Now let's get back to what I'm saying and stuff. When it comes, okay, when you did the state of the district, yes. right, you started prepping that like three weeks ahead. Right. Right? right. You slowly put the information out. You put the information I was putting the information out. Right. This and that. It was crowded. Right. All right? A lot of people feel that when there's a, um, uh, when, there, when it goes to a point where we're doing, um, when it comes to a point like something important about the kids or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you say it very clear and nobody can't go at you at this. You need to come out to these meetings, Absolutely. and and you are right about you can't. Um, um, it's posted in the on the website, on the website, right? And also on the um, in the administration building, I right. believe it is. That's what I remember. Stuff right. I went up there one time because I was curious. Right. All right. Cool. But at the same time, how many people got time to go up there? No, I'm not gonna let, gonna let you rock with that one. If, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to let any parent, any person who have grandparents, if, if you want to know about your kid, you have to inquire. That's a that You got to hold parents, you got to hold grandparents, whoever's the child care, we also got to hold them accountable. You got to hold the board members accountable, you got to hold the administrators accountable, you got to hold the teachers accountable, you got to hold the students accountable, and you definitely got to hold the parents accountable. So we, we can't say, well, I didn't know. You got to go find out. I'm gonna give you. The, I, I can't. I can't come back that one. <laughs> I can't. I can't come back that one. Right. And but see, and, and that goes into us as a community getting back to that, to where we we 
at one, some point was a community where everybody dialed in. Right. And some some long way somewhere along the way we dialed out and tuned out, and where we got to tune back in. Yeah, because it went to a situation like when we was going to school. Uh, my mom wasn't afraid to go up in that school and talk to Kusumano. Right. Or, or absolutely, Miss Francis. Sorry. Absolutely. You know, it was like certain teachers who dialed in on me, Mr. Fusco, Mr. Mills, um, Mr. Fuller. Right. You know, certain teachers, I mean, because my mom was very much involved. Right. So now, how much can we express to these parents to get more involved? Because I think that would put pressure on everything that needs to happen. Well, one, we got we to gotta engage the parents, we got to empower the parents, and we got to educate the parents as well. Because even... Some of these new regulations that are out is is frustrating. Frustrating. You take even for instance, you know, it, it, um, I got all well, these so-called degrees, and and I'm doing my um, kindergarten son's homework, helping him with it, and this Common Core stuff is frustrating. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like it, it's it's um it, it it's so that can turn a parent off or turn a person off because now you're you're feeling like you're lacking something. So how do I get involved? So one of the things we ha we have to do is, is once we start organizing, we got to start empowering and, and educating as we're going along. Right, I'm going to give you that. And I, I do understand what this stuff these kids are doing. I don't know. Right. Ball. <laughs> this, is, this dude's jacket. So, um, so um, you got to see this dude's jacket. <laughs> so, like, um, it comes to, it get, get frustrated, especially with the people, like, there's a lot of Hispanics. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of um, Afro-Americans who really wasn't that good in school right. or this and that. And they looking at this stuff, they're confused. Right. You know? Right. So, like, for like when my oldest was going to school and I was getting stuff, I was like, who does this stuff? Right. You know? Right. But at the same time, I went and found a, a, a chemistry teacher, a professor, right. and said, can you help her out? Right. And see, we, we also need to know, understand the dynamics of our community, too. We, we can't all afford to get our kids tutors. You, you exactly, and, so, and that's and it, where the it, mentoring thing that I was saying. And, and also, it, we, as a school district, we, we gotta understand that and, and realize that some some of the students can't get that extra help that's right. needed. So, so a lot of kids can't get that extra help. Right, so we gotta offer tutoring. You know what I mean? So now that offering tutoring goes back to paying. Yeah, so, but, but again, it goes back to what we always talked about. Right. There's enough of us who don't mind giving an hour out of their time after school. Or when they get off work and say, "Let me help you." Because right. my vision of it was, you know, say the teach, you know, they get off work. Say you get off work at right. six o'clock, right. all right, or whatever. Go by the kid's house and stuff like, "Yo, you got your homework done? Let me check it out. Or right. Let me help you through this." Right. It takes like an hour out your time. My right. sister does it all the time. Right. You know, she's a teacher. She taught at um, Martin, not Martin Luther King. Is it Martin Luther King? Martin Luther King for the teacher was like second and third grade. She taught there forever. Now she's down in Maryland doing kindergarten. Right. But that's one thing she always says, like, she don't have a problem, like, if a parent, you know, want to talk, you know, a parent has a question or whatever, right. she's open ears and stuff. Right. And she don't have a problem. And this is one thing I think teachers should do. They don't have a problem in, like, if a kid needs help, well, let's help them. Right. You know, there's not a problem and stuff. It's like, if, and I know it's hard because some parents don't want nobody telling what their kid to do or this right, and that. Right. You know, and I understand that. And some of these kids are frustrated. And it's one thing that you said in your state of the district address was, don't be afraid. Like, you see these kids, there's a lot of educated kids that's standing on the corner. Right. You know, let's get them off the corner and, like you said, like, have a conversation with them. Right. You know, and I salute you and Kevin Spann and Charles Jazz Jackson. Jackson, yeah. Don't have a problem with going up, you know, going in the middle of them and saying, yo, what's up? Right. You know, how you doing, whatever, blah, blah. You know, you know, you know, you see it all the time because of the firehouse. Right. You know, so like, yo, blah, blah, blah. Let's get them off that street before and give, give them another option. Right. You know, because I feel that a lot of these kids, and I know a lot of mothers and fathers like, oh, my kid ain't going in the military or whatever. So what, you know, you want them in the military, but you want them in jail. Right. You know, because when they did that big sweep on straight path or whatever, you know, one, you're not a good drug dealer. You right. showed that. Two, people was putting on there, it's like, why the cops messing with them? And I'm going to say it, why the cops messing with them? All they're trying to do is make a living for their family. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on, man. Start a business. You know, start a business. I mean, a legal business. You know, I don't want to say start, you know. But, but, but where do I go to start that business? Well, that's where you go to people that's doing stuff, and that's where the mentoring thing comes in. That's you know? my, my point. Right, and you know. That, I mean, that's, that's the, that's, 
let's, let's back up a little. It, it's it's um within our community, there's a lot of frustration on a lot of levels. Exactly. And, and to where we're we're not addressing those particular frustrations, and, and even in in some adults' dialogue with with students, they're saying, "What's wrong with you?" So you, you you can't address a student or a child and say, "What's wrong with you?" because that's putting it, that's something wrong with that particular. Uh, child, as opposed to looking at what outside um, things that are affecting mm -hmm. what they're doing, and and these are some of the things that we at all levels at in, in, inside the community, from the church to the school to the to whoever else that we have to look at in, in terms of not looking at them as as they're the problem. Right, and a lot of these people, kids and stuff, they don't know nothing else, you know, and it's all fun until something happens. You know, and that's where we end up with kids getting killed, and I hate to see that. Uh, you know, going to jail, I hate to see that because nobody deserves that type of lifestyle. Right. And just, you know, take a class or whatever. There's a, I'm telling you, I see these kids, and I remember, you know, I either know their parents or I remember them when they was little, and they're extremely smart. And then they're out there on the corner because they feel like they don't have no choice. So I feel, but but we're, not, we're also as adults not giving them opportunity. Well, that's what I'm saying and stuff. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like when you think just stay in the district, give them a reason to want to, you know, think about an opportunity. Right. You know, you don't have to feel bad uh, about having an opportunity. You know, you really don't have to feel bad about having that um, opportunity. Let me read this real quick and stuff. Okay. Uh, and just give me your opinion on this. Okay. Okay. It has nothing to do with whether or not you were good in school, math and some other STEM coursework and procedures has drastically changed. It's every parent from our era faced with this dilemma, right? So that's basically what we was talking about, right? right? Like everything's changed and stuff like that. So, like you said, we all can't afford tutors, tutors right. you know? But what is the process of getting some tutors, you know, involved with the school and stuff? Well, see, one one of the, like, please don't say we have a discussion about it. No, no. What one of the things we, we have to do is, is look at alternative ways. We, we can get volunteers. We can look for people to write grants or people to bring in programs that offer free tutoring uh -huh. to to the community. Because we we can't as a whole go out and individually pay for tutoring. Right. You no. Know, so that those are, there's there's other means of of getting it, but we hate to say it, have a discussion to figure out how to do it. Right, because cause even like last year, last year's graduation, there was some extremely smart kids. Absolutely. You know, and you know, shout out to Eric Jarvis. I gotta shout this young man out. He used his own money to give, not only did he give bikes out to Milton Olive, mm -hmm. you know, I thought that was pretty dope. He gave bikes out to the, the hardest worker, you know, mm -hmm. the top one on each one, which I think he gotta do more bikes this year. I think the principal, I forgot his name, Kind of put them on the spot, right. but he gave each one out of each class a bike. That's four right. bikes, right. and then he also gave scholarships, two scholarships to uh, deserving seniors that was going to college. Mm. And I thought that was really cool because he did it on his own. Right. To me, that's somebody who's trying to do something. Right. Give these kids like, well, dad, because a lot of kids told him and stuff was like, wow, how can I get a bike and stuff? If you do well in school or whatever, just right. trying to be the best. Right. That's right there is incentive. Because right. at that age, they don't look at it like, I can't do it. Right. Now they got to drop. Now, if you try that in high school, they're like, who wants a bike or whatever? Right. But you know that if you want to go to college or you want to do go to a trade school mm -hmm. or whatever, there was organizations that was giving away uh, free, what was that, books for the, for the four years or something like that? Yes. Uh, tuition. They, book tu tuition. Book tuition. They was giving away, uh, I forgot the organizations that was doing it, but um, they was giving away like 500 I think um, the uh, Mother's Day, and there's another one I, that he was having a meeting at the same time we was having a meeting. Uh, they giving out like I think it was like six or seven fifteen hundred dollar scholarships. But in in in, in that in that spirit, and this is this is I'm I'm gonna put the entire community on 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 blast on this one where where we we as a community got to change our mindset and, and and the culture because we're quick to shout out people who get, get locked up how many people do we shout out that's in college that that may need some money for their books uh -huh. we we will put we'll be quick to put money on people's books when they locked up but are we quick enough to put money on their books when they in, in doing what we ask them to do 
And, and, that, and that I'm putting out to the entire community. And you're right and stuff. And I blame not only the community, I blame the media. Because let some positive, like they just did which I thought it was bad promoting. But you, but you know you're in the media too, right? Oh, I put the truth out. <laughs> you know I put the truth out. Here's the thing. I'm trying to correct that aspect. <laughs> no, you know that. No, that was a good one, though, but, you know, hey. You know, I am in the media. But let me say this. There, um, shout out to the Wine Dance Association. The, uh, the, I don't want to say his name wrong. Delano Stewart. Delano Stewart. Did I say that right? Delano Stewart? Shout out. Well, um, well, he passed away. Yeah, I know. It's named after him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just make sure you it was it called right. Delano Stewart Plaza. Right. I think it was. Right. That's what I was trying to get out. Okay. Before you cut me off. Well, my bad. Right. No, I just know. corrected. Right. Okay. Yeah. But there we go. You need a mentor. <laughs> so what they did was, and I got to give them for putting this event together, the ice skating ring had its opening day. Right. Right. Now, I got hit was how come the community didn't know? Right. You know, that's what, that was the first problem. Um. And a lot of that is, uh, well, one of the people said, like, when Newsday put it out. And I, not too many of us read Newsday. But see, he, he, with that, we, we got to get away from um, a, allowing that to be a, be an answer because there's it, several things that can happen that will, will touch a facet of, of a bunch of things to where we, if we want to get information out, we could pay a couple kids five, ten dollars an hour to go out and knock on some doors. Knock on doors or hand put, out flyers. put them on Facebook and stuff like, yo, do your thing. Right. You know, right. And and that's one thing I always suggest and stuff. You get those kids who who can run a wine dance page or wine dance stuff like that. Like, go for self. Right. You know, Kevin, uh Kevin Spam, myself, uh Jazz, you sleep? <laughs> uh, did he sound like he was asleep? <laughs> I looked up. Okay. Uh myself, uh Jazz Jackson, a few other people. We run the Wine and Family Day and stuff, and we're always putting stuff on there. But also, I also suggest that when there's stuff on that Wine and Family Day page and also the Wine and Plans Association page, share it. Share it on your page because we need to let people know that this stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the thing I want to call them out because I, I got into a discussion about uh, the wine this uh, the ice cream thing and shout out to uh, Grant Marshall and Todd Babylonia great people they definitely definitely like um, uh, they did their thing they stayed out there with the kids and everything until closing so I definitely got to shout them out some people just got their picture up and left but we're not gonna get into that mm -hmm. you know I oh you wasn't there you no, was doing man. something okay. right, was you know I'm about to call you out right, right I was out of the country okay excuse me yeah but um. When it, when it comes down to it, um, when it's something negative that happens in wine dance, and, and this was a discussion I was having with some people on Facebook, you know, some people outside the community. Um, when stuff happens in wine dance, negative, it always gets sensitized. You know, it gets sensitized to the point where uh, it's on national news, mm -hmm. it's being posted every day, this and that, or whatever. What are you doing? Said looking little comments. Okay. Comments. Okay, cool. So it's a lot so of. You're, um, you're not the only one tech savvy over here. Oh, no, 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 no. Need you to listen. Let's make sure they, they get the points across. Okay, no problem, no problem. <laughs> so what happens is we get hit constantly, 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 constantly about so much negative stuff that happens. Right. And I can bring up another instance. Well, let me tell you what happened on this one. I had to throw some numbers at them. Right. You know, so the point is they're saying, like, uh, oh, why should I come out there or bring my kids out there because I want for them to get shot or this and that or whatever and stuff. Right. That's the stigma word that we have. But I also had to look at, I had to explain to them, and I put this post down, they pretty much shut it down. Mm. Now, it used to be 80 something, 70 something percent, I, got, I don't know the exact number, but I remember posting it, because I had looked it up again. 70 something percent, above 70 percent, of crime that happens in wine dance are from people who are not from wine dance. Absolutely. Has nothing to do with the school district, has nothing to do with the plaza, has nothing to do with the, the good community that we have. Right. But we get the stigma, there's like, oh, wine dance this and wine dance that. Right. Now, let me bring this other one. Uh, there was a young man that was killed right before wine dance day, a right. couple years ago, right? Three, four years ago, right. Yeah, okay. He got killed. And all the press, all the neighboring neighborhoods, they were saying, the, that's wine dance is known for that, this and that, or whatever. So, you know, so we had wine dance, we didn't have a problem, it was a great event. Mm 
Right. You know, rest in peace to that young man. Right. Uh, sorry, you know, that stuff happened and stuff, and, uh, and uh, much respect to that family. But what I'm having my problem at is I monitored that next day everybody who was saying stuff when they was talking about their area. Mm-hmm. There was something negative happening at all the events. Right. You know. So my thing is that was never even announced. It was like maybe in a penny saver or something. Right. You know. But stuff that happened in Wine, there was somebody killed at, um, uh, what was it, Valley Stream, I think it was. There was people that were stabbed in the predominantly, you know, I'm going to say predominantly white neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. You know, because they, they was doing their they family day as well. All this stuff happened. Nobody knew nothing about that, you know. But but there's so much positive thing that's going on with these kids in the Winders community, like the robotics thing. Right. There was something else she was talking about. They traveling somewhere or something like that. Or? Yeah, the um, a couple programs where they, the the students are traveling and, and performing. Um, it, it's a it's a whole it's, it's a, a whole lot. So one of the things that we got to understand is um, when when <coughs> surrounding towns get the cold, Winders get the flu. So that, that we're, we're under a, a huge microscope in, in terms of a lot of things. But one of the things that we're not doing, we're not telling our own story. We're allowing the media, outside forces to tell our story. We're not telling our own story. So one of the main things behind even doing the State of the District Address is, is telling our story. Right. Like we, we, we got issues. I'm not running from that, never ran from that. But there's a, a myriad of, of a lot of positive things that's going on. A lot of a lot of students achieving at all types of levels: academic, social, emotional, uh, uh, athletic. A- athletic. So it, it, our students are phenomenal, and, and you got to remember they're they're doing this with with not the same means as other surrounding districts, and they, they're able to compete at, at high levels w- without the same um, tools that other school districts have. Right. And I and I think you know that puts the board, school board, um, and um, what's the word I want to use? It's strangling y'all, right? You know, and I and that part I understand. Right. It strangles it strangles y'all because y'all job is hard. Absolutely. You know, each and every member, I gotta, you know, I don't personally know what goes on in the meetings, but I know it's a hard job, and you got to make these hard choices. Right. You know, any choice that you make is going to be talked about. Right. They're going to come in. So definitely. Right. Right. My thing is I just want these choices to be made, you know, um, to always be helping. Right. Sometimes it's going to look like it's not helping. Absolutely. But I'm going to tell you, now this is my own personal opinion. I don't think high up should get any more raises until okay. we get this squared up. This is my personal opinion. Okay. All right. And it's a few of us that we had this conversation today, you know, that they feel the same way. And, and my thing is this stuff, I look at it as an incentive to get, like, and for us as the school board, not the school board, as the school district to get an incentive to get this money, I think everybody who's working there should be an incentive to get that money. Right. You know, like for me, it's an incentive to get these sponsors money, mm-hmm. you know. So that means my incentive is to give a good show. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, cause this ain't free. Right. You know, so um, I definitely feel, I mean, my personal opinion, I think it just got to be put to... Put the rest of the negativity that's going in, mm-hmm. you know. And as much as I hate to say it, it's going to show its eye again. Right. You know, right. there's certain members that's on uh, in higher up. Mm-hmm. I, I'm doing or done stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and I think that the only way to correct this is to I don't want to say call them out, but like let's sit them at the table and talk to the parents. Right. You know, because I've never seen certain people you know, actually interact with the parents. Now, I've seen where I've gotten cursed out. Mm. I've seen where I put black and white information, stuff that I went to the town and got, mm-hmm. sitting right in front of me. The next day, I'm trying, I'm, they're threatening to sue me. Right. When I'm putting hard and cold facts. And my thing is, everybody should be under the microscope. Right. You know, and Absolutely. when I say everybody under the microscope is, uh, I know for a fact there's been a lot of negativity done but it's also been a lot of positivity done as well. Mm-hmm. So I think about even 50-50. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna have to call you out, man. You're the school board president. Absolutely. We expect for you and the school board to lead this community, this school community, to get, you know, to do what you gotta do. 
Now, is this going to, are we going to get this 22 million overnight? No. No, no it might be a few years, which sucks because it's, it's hindering a lot of kids, mm -hmm. you know. And we don't want to lose kids to other districts and stuff. Right. You know, we can't, and we're in a situation where we're building up our community, right. and then we got all these kids and we got nowhere for them to go. Right. And I ain't going to front. When I moved to New York and stuff, that first week, and everybody who's listening, who went to school with me, who was nice to me in school, or whatever, Bart, you, you're just going to trip you out that I say this or whatever. That first week, I cried every day I came home. Mm. I do not want to go to Wine Dance. Mm. I want to go to Half Hour Hills. Mm. But my reason was different. Right. But my mom said, no, we need to get some black in. Mm. And that was her word. So, it's facts. <laughs> you know. So I learned, I was lucky enough to have friends like Bart, Cynthia Thacker, um, Helen Barnes, Cecilia Barnes, uh, coaches, uh, teachers, who was like, oh, especially Miss Gray. You know, I love Miss mm. Gray. Miss Gray was my Pam Greer. Mm, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, and Miss Trent, can't forget about Miss Trent. But I was lucky enough to have these teachers that were so involved in what I was doing. Right. So that's why I know it worked for me. Right. That's why I feel like the mentoring ish aspect of it it should work for these kids, right? You know, now I can say I'm at fault, uh, you know, in in a point of of being like the mentoring thing. I tried it, and you know I have, right? And I got shut down, you know. But okay, but I don't mind. And and I'm a what? What are you laughing at? It, it's true, <laughs> it's true. So I'm gonna say this, and I and I want you to put this out. Okay. All right. I've done shows. Um, I've done a show. Well, I've not done. I've done a show where I literally let a student mm -hmm. put the show together. Okay. She did all the questions. Mm -hmm. She talked to the guests and got them together, gave them all the information. Mm -hmm. She produced it. All I had to do was ask her questions. So, so can you do that once a month? I would love to. I have put that out. Okay, let's work on it. But, I, but here's the thing. I have put that out to certain people that's in the school. Right. You know, and I'm not going to say his name, but or her name. But, so, so let's get to the right people. All right, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, right, I'm, I'm, I'm putting I'm, it in your lap. Okay. I would love to let, you so know. I'm going to call you right after this show. Be ready to go. <laughs> no, because I would love for a student, like, who do you who do you think that you would want to eat? Like, it could be somebody in the right. school. It could be right. a teacher. Right. It could be this. And then let me help you produce a show. Right, and you may save a life. Exactly. Right. And that's that's one, that's only um, that's only one thing that we can do. Okay, I just had to finish that monologue, but um, right. if somebody wanted to know more information what we was talking about, mm -hmm. uh, things that we have going on and stuff like that, where can they contact you or the school board and everything? Um, you can you can reach me at um, 631-245-5693. That's the uh, cell phone. And then also you can find me on Facebook, James Crawford, on Facebook. Um, those are the two main ways to get in contact with me. Okay. Uh, and let me say this real quick. The young lady who produced this um, this show, it was with the five black um, athletic co uh, college coaches. Right. Remember that show? Uh -huh. And that was Andre Edwards' daughter. Right. Okay, now he's an alum. Right. Coaches at uh, NYT. NYIT. Yeah. All right, he's a coach there. Sorry about that, Dre. But yet she gave, she put together a great show. Right. And I was very impressed with her questions. Uh, you know, I had to throw my few in there and stuff right. like that. But it was a great show. She was very passionate about what she's doing. So salute to Andre Edwards' daughter. Please let this brother know that, you know, that, you know, he's done a great job and everything. And everybody knows Andre. You know, if you're working with him or you're, he coaching you, he's a little rough. <laughs> but he is very fair. Right. He's very fair. He's going to make you get to where you need to go to. Right. All right. So definitely I want to thank everybody who tuned in on Facebook Live. Tune in on the website. Tune let, in on Let Paris me just Tone. shout out the um, we had a group of students that come out to the board uh, meeting and, and they did wine dance proud. They you know very um, articulate. Okay. No no okay. It's students it's students from oh, um, middle school high school um, in tune and form articulate got the points across and you know it, I'm I'm excited about our future. You, you know shout out to those students that came out to the board meeting. So hopefully see y'all there at the next one. All right. So I definitely want to, um, I definitely want to make sure I, you know, people that I know that's working really hard in the school district. Um, who am I thinking about? Um, um, Sharon Baker, uh, Mr. Sibley's the principal. Um, who's the um, the football coach? 
Josh Shields. Josh Shields, you did an outstanding job this year, my brother. He did an outstanding job of uh, coaching the Winders football team. Uh, they they made the playoffs. Right. So definitely from not winning any games from a couple years before or right. something like that. So definitely, um, uh, we definitely got to shout out that young man. Um, now somebody asked, you know, they sent me a text that says the people, and I'm gonna call them out, the superintendent, board members, um, Mr. Gregory, uh, Ms. John Chapeau, John, John Pierre, John Pierre, I do apologize on that. And they put up, they put up, it's like, how come I never had none of them on the show? Right. All right. Okay, all I can do is ask. All I can do is ask her. I would love to have them on the show. I think it'll be a great show. Because I'm all about, you know, some of them have been given a bad rap. So I want them to, like, even speak on what they're talking about. Right. You know, so I don't, I don't like to take one side. But I did have a problem on that report that was put out by the school board being scolded. And I wanted all the information to uh, be put out there correctly. So that's one thing. That I had talked to Mr. Crawford about it, and I asked him, can we do this show again? You know, so good we, that we did it before the year is up. Right. So that was definitely a good thing. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely want to shout out everybody, every teacher, every athletic coach, every board member, higher up, that's doing so much positive things for the community, for the wide, for the students, for the students. Y'all do, your job is very hard. You don't get commended enough to in what you do and everything. And, uh, you see this dude watch? This is what happens when you get three masters. <laughs> like, like a necklace for you or something. Well, shout out to my kids for the birth, birthday gift. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Shout and what's your kid's name? Jameer, James, and uh, Josiah. Yo, look for them in the Olympics. Straight up, straight up. Look for them in the Olympics, because those kids are a beast wrestling and stuff. So shout out to them. Shout out to your lovely wife. Right, Kevin Spann, his lovely wife. Uh, Abraham Kevin Spann, his son's Allstate Insurance. Uh, Stewart Film Group. Definitely thank you for showing your show, showing my show live in your theater right now. So definitely salute to you. And also um, uh, Arizona Ice Tea. Thank you so much. You know, you got to stay hydrated when we're doing the show. Shout out to my man Dollar Bill. Uh, Sandra, who does so much for the show. Tracy, who does so much for the show. Uh, my boy Brandon. He's focused back in school, so definitely shout out to him. Uh, so, I think that's it. Man. Did I miss anybody? Nah. I got your dollar. And shout out to Strong Island TV for allowing me to give such a great show. We're hitting 2019 pretty hard, and I got a couple projects that's going to be happening. I start filming uh, January on one of them. So definitely, y'all keep your eye out. We'll keep a hush-hush until uh, we start. One of them, the ink is signed. I mean, the ink is dry mm. another one the ink is like on there but not really on there so we got to make sure we do it correctly everybody got to be protected so thank you again uh shout out to Linnell my man Bart Sarah Marlene uh, shout out to Linnell we see you yeah no doubt <laughs> I'm my little cupcake buddy yeah all right Stacy uh oh Carl B definitely shout out to you Naomi um when I see you uh so Starling Queen, shout out her. I got to call her. Definitely. Uh, my man Dallas, thank you for tuning in. John Jones, salute to you, brother. And I totally agree to you what you say. Uh, record label there. Uh, Crimean music? Oh, I don't know. But shout out. For, thanks for tuning in. There's so much more. Uh, Leticia Canards, thank you. My man uh, Sincere, KB. It's so many. Kamel, Heathward. Uh, thank you for so much tuning in. This is a very important show. And I hope that y'all tune in and hopefully this will start a conversation where we can start doing a lot of stuff for the wine dance community, the school, because these kids are our future. Cause somebody gotta take care of me when I can take care of me when I get old. So there it is. All right. There it is. We check y'all out next week. Oh,